Hello, this is Svetlana from the class of 2022, and in this video we will look at setting up the coding environment that you will use at Minerva for various purposes, including FA assignments or programming structured study sessions. So first, we should download a package of useful data science tools called Anaconda from anaconda.com. You can find the link in the video description. Then on the download page, we click download in the upper right corner, scroll down, and click on the download again under the latest Python version, which is Python 3.7 at the moment. This action will download Anaconda installer, and such process can take up to 10-20 minutes. After the download is complete, go to your downloads folder and double-click on Anaconda installer package. The Anaconda installer will open and will guide you through the installation process. We recommend you follow the default installation settings. So here we would click continue, then we would click to continue again, read important information, click continue, click the read the license agreement, click continue again, um, agree with the license agreement, and then uh, click install. This process can take up to 10-20 minutes. Okay, now we choose continue and uh, we choose close. After that, we do want to move uh, Anaconda 3 to trash. Now you're ready to work with Anaconda tools and one we will use is Jupyter Notebook. There are two ways to open it. First, you can use your terminal window. So you can open terminal window and type in Jupyter Notebook. The new window, which is Jupyter homepage, should open in your default browser. Another way to reach the same result is to open the Anaconda program. In Anaconda Navigator, you will see a full set of coding tools that Anaconda provides. You will need to click on Launch under a Jupyter Notebook. And again, a new window will open in your default browser. After launching Jupyter Notebook, you should see black terminal window running on the background. It is important not to close it during the whole session with any Anaconda products, including Jupyter Notebook. However, it is okay to minimize or hide the window. So in this new browser, you will see a Jupyter home screen, and you can see folders and files in your home directory which have exact same location and structure as Finder on your Mac. You can create your own Jupyter Notebook by clicking on New and Python 3. Or you can choose to open the existing notebook by navigating to its location. For example, by going to downloads and clicking on SSS demo video notebook. As you can see, all notebooks have extensions I, P, Y, and B, which stands for IPython notebook. This is how notebooks look like. The smallest and most important component of the notebook is the cell. We recognize two main types of cell. Code, where you can input your Python code and execute it, and markdown cell that are used to write formatted text and anything you would see in the normal text editor, including images, charts, equations, bullet points, etc. That's what makes Jupyter Notebooks popular in education and research. To edit the markdown cell, double click on the cell and you will enter the edit mode. You can edit it now and to get the beautifully formatted text back, you can run the cell by clicking the run button or you can uh, click shift and return. Code cells are composed of three areas, the input area, the display area, and the output area. The input area contains your Python code with highlighting according to Python syntax. After you press the run button, you will see um, below, below the code cell, you will see the display area and the output area. The difference between these two areas is subtle and confusing, but it's very important in some instances. The display area is reserved for any items that code has produced for viewing. That includes simple text or figures from the plot. The output area uh, is reserved for items that the cell returns. Also, it is important to say that you can change a cell type by going to the upper panel and clicking on markdown or so code as you need.
All code in the notebook is executed by the kernel. The kernel is a Python interpreter or console running at the background, listening for your request and returning output. The kernel is doing all the computations and keeping all the variables. Sometimes your code may need more time to compute the result. For instance, if we run these cells, we can see that there was no problem executing them. You can see this, uh, these numbers indicate that the cells were executed successfully. But then if we run this cell, we can see this asterisk, which basically created a queue. And the, the following actions would not be computed until this cell was executed. What if your cell is broken and contains some code that will never finish? For instance, here we have infinite loop while true print hello kernel and true is true forever. And we see that kernel is performing this action by having this asterisk here and by having this gray, full gray circle here. So in this case, how do we fix the problem? We can go to kernel and um, click interrupt. This will basically stop the action, whatever action the kernel was doing at that moment. However, sometimes it can be not enough to do that. So the second way to deal with the problem is to go to kernel and restart and clear output. This will force kernel to stop and new kernel will be created. The problem is that new kernel does not remember the previous variables, so you will have to rerun your cells from the top again. Except for while true. The kernel remembers all the variables that have been created by running the cell. These variables can be edited or deleted. For instance, previously defined my large R variable is in a kernel's memory. So if we run it, we can see the previously defined my large variable. However, we can also choose to change it to assign a new value to this large variable. And in this case, if we print the my large variable again, another value will be print printed out. You need to be extra careful when you execute cells in a different order. This can lead to very unexpected results. For instance, here we have three cells that were not executed or run before, as we can see by having this empty square brackets. If we choose to run this second cell, print my variable, we'll face a name error, and it will say that name error my variable is not defined. Why? Because this cell was not run yet. Therefore, we didn't assign any value to my variable. But if we run this cell now and rerun this cell, we will see that there is no problem executing this cell. We also can choose to reassign the value to my, vari my variable, for instance, here. And once again, if we run print my variable, we will see a new value because the last, va the last value that kernel remembered was 500. Okay, now you learn how the cells work and you're ready to create your own one. You can do it by clicking the plus sign in the upper panel and here you, see you have a new cell. You can also choose to change the order of the cells by clicking the arrows up and down. And then if you don't like a cell, you can delete it by clicking on the scissor sign here. Also, do not forget to, to save your work by clicking the save sign and then you're done. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful year at Minerva.